September 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Timothy, Chapter 2 from the New Testament. So you, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and entrust what you heard me say in the presence of many others as witnesses to faithful people who will be competent to teach others as well. Take your share of suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one in military service gets entangled in matters of everyday life. Otherwise, he will not please the one who recruited him. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he will not be crowned as the winner unless he competes according to the rules. The farmer who works hard ought to have the first share of the crops. Think about what I am saying and the Lord will give you understanding of all this. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David, such is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship to the point of imprisonment as a criminal, but God's message is not imprisoned. So I endure all things for the sake of those chosen by God, that they too may obtain salvation in Christ Jesus and its eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful since he cannot deny himself. Remind people of these things and solemnly charge them before the Lord not to wrangle over words. This is of no benefit. It just brings ruin on those who listen. Make every effort to present yourself before God as a proven worker who does not need to be ashamed teaching the message of truth accurately. But avoid profane chatter, because those occupied with it will stray further and further into ungodliness, and their message will spread its infection like gangrene. Hymenaeus and Philetus are in this group. They have strayed from the truth by saying that the resurrection has already occurred, and they are undermining some people's faith. However, God's solid foundation remains standing bearing the seal, the Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from evil. Now in a wealthy home there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also ones made of wood and of clay, and some are for honorable use, but others for ignoble use. So if someone cleanses himself of such behavior, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart, useful for the master, prepared for every good work. But keep away from youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace in company with others who call on the Lord from a pure heart. But reject foolish and ignorant controversies because you know they breed infighting. And the Lord's slave must not engage in heated disputes, but be kind toward all, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. Perhaps God will grant them repentance and the knowledge of the truth, and they will come to their senses and escape the devil's trap, where they are held captive to do his will. God, I've always found this chapter in Timothy, 2 Timothy, really interesting because part of it talks about um, not arguing over things, uh, that there's no benefit to arguing over over words and it just brings ruin on those who listen and then further on it talks about correcting people but to do so with gentleness and there's no contradiction here although people try and make it a contradiction um, and some people are like oh one is talking to believers one's talking to non-believers and I tend to unless you actually tell me that I tend to not try and put those label labels or those filters on it but I think I think both are incredibly factual, whether we're talking to believers or non-believers. Sometimes, as believers, we argue over things within the church to the point that there is no point. <laughs> Which is your point? Uh, we argue over end of time things, we argue over uh, gifts uh, that may possibly be still being given. Uh, things like speaking in tongues and how do you do that. Uh, we argue over things that are very secondary. And and it does bring ruin on those who listen because sometimes I've watched people leave churches over these arguments. And I've also watched non-believers watch these arguments and say, oh, the church is just a bunch of hypocrites. They can't decide upon anything. And then 
I think really clearly that second part about correcting people with gentleness. One, in having these discussions, it's, I find it's always really fascinating to learn about other people's belief systems and how they arrived at that. And sometimes I learn really great things from them. Um, and doing so with gentleness, I think is really important, not constantly having our feathers ruffled, um, but also correcting people. So if somebody says something that is factually wrong, uh, especially about salvation, of correcting them with gentleness. And this is, I think this is true whether it's a believer or a non-believer, um, that if it's a non-believer, they're only going to listen to you if you do it with gentleness. If you're argumentative with them, they're not going to pay attention to you. Um, for the most part, pretty much the same is true with a believer, although believers, we almost need to be a little bit stricter with that um, because they know better. And it kind of gets into how we've been taught to handle situations by going to that person and pointing out certain issues. Um, and then if they won't listen, bringing somebody else uh, into that discussion with us. But I think the gentleness part, God, is something that we could all work on. Um, we would definitely appreciate your guidance and help with that because I know, especially for me, my tact levels aren't always <laughs> the best and I could always use extra doses of graciousness and gentleness and kindness uh, when sharing the gospel and talking about it. I know that it gets out of hand because I'm so passionate about it, but that doesn't make it right. So God, can you please help keep both these truths in our heart that arguing over senseless things to the point of just arguing, there's no point to that. But making sure that what is being spoken, if we know it is, is factual or not factual, of making sure that the correction, if it needs to have happen, is done with gentleness and kindness uh, and all the, all the grace and mercy that you have shown to us as much as possible. God, thank you for not only teaching us about your word, but giving us the discernment to know what is the truth and what it is that we need to tell others in this world about you and your son. In your son's name I do pray. Amen.